So we want to read from, um, I want to pick it up from why Jesus was killed. And then I'll give you the, the topic, what we want to talk about, why Jesus was killed. So John chapter 11, that's not the topic. I'm, I'm using that as a foundation to say what I want to say. So the topic is not why Jesus was killed, please. I'm, in fact, I want to talk about offenses. Uh, but let me um, start with this. So John chapter 11. Are we there? We want to read from verse 45. John chapter 11 from verse 45. Then many of the Jews, this is after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. So Lazarus had been, de had been dead for four days. And Jesus went to the tomb, called his name, and Lazarus came back from the dead. So after Lazarus came back from the dead, this is what he says from verse 45, John chapter 11. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Um, okay, it's, it's, it's there. Good. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did, he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one, the children of God who were scattered abroad. Verse 53. Can we all read verse 53? Ready, go. Okay, so why, why did they start thinking about killing Jesus from this text? Why did they start thinking about killing Jesus? Thank you. Yes, why did they start? Anybody, any answer? Oh, ni. Of an aiming away, different signs that Jesus did. Okay, healing people and all these things. So the signs he performed. Yes. What did what did what did the signs do to them? They were it, they were envious. Yes. So uh, they thought that if we if we let him live long, the whole so they were jealous. Yes. They were envious. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Let's let's appreciate uh, me. So, what actually started the idea of killing Jesus was that they were offended that they, the chief priests, were not performing miracles. And this small boy, 33 years old, 30 years old, was performing miracles and people were following him. So, for us as adults with long beards, sitting in this nation, and not causing any effect. Then this young guy is, is causing all this effect. Let's, let's, let's clear him. Let's clear him. And that's how come we have Easter. So the root of Easter is that they were offended that a young man was outshining them. And so they had to end his life. But hidden in that hatred and that offense... And carrying out the death of Jesus was the salvation of humanity. Amen. So I want to talk about offenses. 
I, being offended. Amen. Now, um, in fact, I don't have anybody's case in mind. So as we preach, whichever way the arrow will go, if it passes by your house, it's a stray bullet. It was not, it was not meant for that. It's not, it was not targeted at you. So if we give any example that looks like your own, it's just an example we give. And if we say anything that appears like something you heard somewhere, in fact, I don't have anything in mind. So um, we will talk about offenses. Now, how many of us have never been offended? Anybody, you've never been offended in your life? Anybody? So we all agree that we all get offended, right? Once you are human, you will be offended. Life is such that it's full of offenses. And when I was meditating on this, I even realized that even God, he gets offended. So, being offended is not a function of being on earth. Even spirits get offended. God was the first person who was offended. In the garden, he was. They offended him. Adam and Eve. Praise God. Angel Gabriel was offended when he was sent to deliver a message to Zachariah. He said, you shall give birth to a son. Then Zachariah said, give me a sign. They said, I'm Gabriel. I stand before God. I'm telling you this and you're asking me this question. You'll be dumb. Even a, so, offenses are not because we are human. Even spirits get offended. God, so the Bible says that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can also be grieved. Praise God. So, we all get offended. We have all been offended and we have all offended people. Anybody who has not offended, you have never offended anybody. Let's see. Then you are a good person. We, we, we have all, knowingly or knowingly, we have offended someone or we have been offended. So, it needs to be understood that this subject is very, very, very important. And then you see, where two or three people gather, once two or three people gather, offenses are inevitable. Somebody will do something that you didn't like, will say something that you didn't, you thought should have been said better, or I mean, we, we have sensitivities that make us offended. One time, today we are going to have a naming ceremony. One time we are having a naming ceremony up there. So, I called somebody to pray. And the person prayed and said, oh Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to give you all the praise. We So, while we are having church, Somebody came to tell me that, please, there's a man looking for you. So I came, I came out and went to the back. And then the person told me that. Um, don't ever say, God, we, want, we just want to thank you. It is offensive. You just want to thank God. No. How can you say, just want to thank God? That's the day I realized that. The things that offend people. Are interesting. So you see, somebody is worried that somebody is praying and saying, We just want to thank you. Say, No, you just, you can't say, You just want to thank God. I believe the person did English in school. So you see, <laughs> I was surprised, and it's not like a joke, he was serious. He was really serious about, No, you don't say that. So we have sensitivities that trigger offenses. Sometimes, the action itself is not really offensive, but your own sensitivity is making you offended. May God help us. Now, I want to define what an offense is in the general sense, and then I will give the biblical sense of an offense. So an offense is basically an act that causes annoyance, displeasure, or resentment. So something happens and then you are not happy about it. You, are, you feel the person should have talked to you that way and then all that. Now, to be offended is a state of being or feeling insulted or disrespected or morally outraged. So you feel like, no, they didn't treat me well. Um, they, they, they didn't do this to me. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. Now, let me give you an example. If we sent the choir 
Qua, qua, give me a wave. If let's say we went out with a qua to um, um, let's say a residential facility, and let's see the qua executives, qua executives, the executives, then every one of the executives is giving a room to himself or herself. And then the other members who are not executives are put in a kind of dormitory, like four in a room, four in a room. Then the executives are one in a room, one in a room. Let's say you are an executive. But you don't know that the executives have been put one to a room. You don't know it. And you happen to find yourself where there are four in a room. You know normally you wouldn't have an issue. It is when you get to know that the executives are supposed to be in one room. Once you get to know that, something starts. Mm. Why didn't they send me to? See? <laughs> then you start feeling like, no, they, are not, they, they don't respect me. Why is it that the other executives are in, in, a, in a room and then I'm not? So sometimes the things you know are the things that make you offended. It's not really the issue. The things you get to know and you get to hear and you get to experience. May God help us. We'll soon start getting into the Bible. But in the Bible, when offense is used, especially in the New Testament, it refers to, see, a stumbling block, anything that causes someone to sin. So the sense of offense in the New Testament is stronger than just a feeling of uh, displeasure. It's, it's much more than that. When in the Bible, when you say um, you have offended, let, let's read, let's go to, um, maybe because of time, uh, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 17. From verse 1, if we can have it. Luke chapter 17 from verse 1. Or let me read from here. Okay. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. Maybe let's switch, switch to NIV. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble, okay, so this one, are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. Okay, let me, I want to maintain offenses, so please go back to New King James. I want my offense, the, the word offense. Okay, it's impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Let's go on, please. It will be better for him if a milestone were hanged around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. So, the meaning of offense here is not just making someone feel uncomfortable. This one is where you make someone sin. It means that you place a stumbling block. It's just like someone is running and you, you do this. So that the person will fall, will topple over and fall. So this one is stronger than just making someone feel uh, not accepted. This one is far stronger. So I'm bringing two definitions for offense. Just an act that makes you feel uh, disrespected, that makes you annoyed, and that brings resentfulness in you. But more strongly, an offense can be something that makes people sin. So you are doing something that, so if, if you are a lady and you dress provocatively, you are offending people. Because anything that makes someone sin or stumble is an offense. Praise God. But in this discussion, I'll be looking at things that make us feel uh, like we're not respected, we're not pleased, we're not okay. And it happens in church a lot. Is that not so? It's possible that this, many, this morning as we came, Something happened that made you feel like maybe the usher should have, shouldn't have talked to you that way. Now, do you know that if you meet a Dakomia, traditionally in Ghana, if you meet a Dakomia, you can't just say, Akomia, or is that not so? Is that, is that not? That's our orientation. But do you know that in certain cultures, that thing is a common thing. So, when you are old and a younger person calls you by your name and you feel like he doesn't respect, it is your orientation which is making you feel that way. Because if you translate the same action into another context, 
the person will be okay. So all I'm saying is that offenses are as a result of our orientation, our temperaments, and then our sensitivities. They are things which make us offended. Praise God. Now, let's look at what, uh, some of the things that cause offenses. Just practical things. Um, one, mostly it's words, thoughts, and actions or inactions. Words, thoughts, actions or inactions. Words, thoughts. Now, when someone says something in an unpleasant way, or when you think the person should have said it in a better way, you can get offended. Then, when you are ignored, or you think you have been ignored, you can get offended. Then, when you have been given something you don't like, that one can offend us, right? When they give you something you don't like. No, two people were put on program. It was opening prayer and worship. So one person will lead opening prayer and another person will lead worship. Now opening prayer was 10 minutes and then the worship. So it was just when you finish leading the opening prayer, don't pray. Just hand over the microphone to the next person to lead us in a time of worship. Now, the gentleman, it was a gentleman and a lady. The gentleman who started the opening prayer could lead both opening prayer and worship. He was good at both. But the lady who was leading the worship was not good at both. So we decided that, okay, let's allow the gentleman who's good at both to lead the opening prayer so that the lady could lead the worship. Now, he was offended. You know what offended him? One, the opening prayer is 10 minutes. Worship is 15 minutes. So you should have given the 15 minutes to me. So he's offended. Two, worship is more honorable than opening prayer. So you should have given the more honorable thing to me. Hey, sometimes if you hear, if you hear the things that worry people enough, you wonder, are we all on earth? Should this be your problem? And you see, the person will be so offended and will think that he has the right to be offended. In fact, he thinks his license to be offended. I have a license. This one, if you do it to anybody, the person will... If you, 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 uh, and people get, we get offended about many, 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 many things. Many things. May God help us. Amen. Amen. One time I was preaching in church and then I was putting on a watch and then I just checked the time. When I closed, one elder came. Not here, not in Graceland. He said, Pastor, don't do that again. <laughs> if you are in the presence of God, you don't put on a watch and check your time. I said, hey. Hey. <laughs> now we went for a crusade somewhere and it was time for worship so um, the one who was playing the keyboard was not doing well so I went to help him just when I went to help him one old man came from behind we are worshipping God you don't play I was shocked. I said, where did he get his mind from? <laughs> so, people get offended by many, 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 many things. May God help us. Now, uh, I know you are, you are remembering your own. You are remembering your own. What offended you some time ago? And sometimes what? Uh, you, should, you should sometimes just wake up and say, ah, why is this thing offending? What's my problem? Eh? What's my problem? May God help us. I said, may God help us. Amen. You are not married. You are about to marry. Eh? You go to your in-law's house. When you are not married, oh, you greet, you greet, you fine, fine, fine. Now you are married, your in-law has come to visit you. You are angry. Are you okay? Like, you, you, you see what I'm talking about? Now you are, you, are, you, are, you are uncomfortable. When you are not married, meanwhile, you were the one, oh, now you are married, you, you, you don't have issues. Some of the things that offend us and people are worried about, we, we are worried about that, you don't like this, you don't like that, we don't like that. The, the best thing is that, sit down and ask yourself, I think that the problem is with me. And then work on yourself. Many of the things sometimes that offend us, they are not really an issue. They are not really an issue. 
Sometimes in, in church like this, you can even be offended about seats. I'm the one who sits here. She knows I'm the one who sits. Every day she knows it. Today she came early. She has come to sit on it. <laughs> ah! Sit! Where to sit to? Where to sit? I'm the one who sits on this one. And she, she knows. He knows I'm the one who sits. And then this. And you, you, can, you can find many things that will worry you. May God help us. Amen. 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 I said may God help us. Amen. So, See, they are objective things, actions that can make you offended. They are things that are, they are not subjective. They are, they are things, I mean, when you take it anywhere, this thing is offensive. But they are subjective things too as well. There's something, some of the things will not offend this one, they will offend it. But there are things too that are, I mean, generally, when you talk about, no, no, this, you shouldn't do this. No, this one is not right. It's not right. Like an elder, there was a program, an elder was reading the Bible, but he was fumbling. I said it, he was fumbling and re trying to read, he couldn't read. But you see, when you are preaching and you are on fire, you want things to flow quickly. When things are delaying like that, you like, I'm, uh, so um, the one preaching was a fanti. Hey! Ed and can babble them. Like, as an elder, and you are, you are an elder and you are reading the Bible this way. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. So, the elder went away. I don't think the elder will ever read the Bible again. <laughs> this approach is very embarrassing. I mean, there could have been a better approach to that. So, I don't know what the whole thing is. And so, they are subjective things and they are, obj I mean, there are some of the things you just know that, no, no, this one is, is just, it's just not correct. Some of the things too are based on your own ideas and how you see the world and how things go around for you. May God help us. Let's look at some biblical examples. In Genesis chapter 4, 3 to 11. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 11. Let's see what happened. As for this, this our brother, I don't know what was wrong with him. Cain, your own brother, Cain and Abel. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Let's go on, please. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. So, the personality comes before the offering. The Lord respected Abel and his offering. Let's go on, please. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. Let's go to new NIV. I think NIV will be better. NIV. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry. Let's, let's go and ask Cain. Why was he angry? We have all gone to God. I didn't go and bribe God. I didn't go and do anything. I did my own thing. You also did your own thing. We applied for the job the same way. Your CV was nice. My own too was nice. And then they called me and employed me. You are angry. You are offended that I have been employed. We all submitted our CV and our appointment with our, our, our letters together. You are offended. So Cain is offended because God has accepted the offering of Abel. Why? Why? Why are you angry? And his face was downcast. Now, if you are so offended that it appears on your face, then you are really offended. You know, sometimes people can be offended, but it's just here, you don't really see it. But when it shows on the face, then you are really offended. You are really worried. And we'll get into marriage. If you can't handle offenses, don't marry. Just don't marry. Don't marry. Praise God. Don't marry you. If you don't know, I said that we're celebrating 25 years of marriage. <laughs> and grandpa, don't marry. Just sit somewhere and sell ice cream. <laughs> Verse 6. Then the Lord said to, said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is you? Sometimes you need to sit down and ask yourself, why am I angry? Why am I offended about this? Why? Then you realize that there is a nature in you. There is, there is an orientation in you that is causing that. It's not because the action is evil but your own there's a desire in you a jealousy a, a, some kind of anger that is causing that you are the same workplace 
Someone has been promoted over you. You start feeling uncomfortable. You see, those are the initial stages. This. Hmm? These are the initial stages of witchcraft. This one. No, I'm telling you. Witchcraft is a work of the flesh. These are, that's how it starts. See, somebody has something you don't have. You start feeling like, eh, no, no. Why should he have it and I don't have it? No, it should have come to me. So you have, start, you have started class one, witchcraft. If another thing happens, you endorse it. Very soon, you realize that evil spirits will come and take over that thing. And then you start operating strangely. You will not know. You start doing strange things. That's it. Hey, why did they do this? Why is it that this person had this and I didn't have it? Why, did, why is it that? No. Cain is offended. May God help us. Because his brother's offering. And this is a brother. So you can imagine if it was not his brother or a colleague worker. You can imagine. His own blood brother. He's worried about that. No time. So he went on. Let's go on, please. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. You must master it. Verse 8. Now Cain said to his brother, Abel, let's go out to the field. <laughs> Somebody is offended. They can give you nine suggestions, but at the back of their minds. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Mm. Now he did this physically, but many people are now doing it. There are several ways of killing people. You can use your pen to kill someone. You can use your mouth to kill someone. You can use your actions just because you think that it should have come to me, didn't come to me. So you are doing everything to sabotage the person. You are doing everything to kill. No. That, that's, you are doing extra classes in witchcraft. <laughs> May God help us. I know there's nobody here. I know there's nobody here like that. Now, Joseph and his brothers, Genesis 37, 3 to 5. Another interesting thing. Genesis 37, 3 to 5. Now, Israel, that is Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. So their father loved. You know, usually, the love of parents gets heightened as the children are added on. Usually, last bonds have a kind of special treat. This one you should understand. You don't have to fight over this thing. So, more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him. Let's go, please. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him. Oh. And could not speak a kind word to him. You are, you are offended. Just because your boss likes this other person more than you. And so you feel, we need, to, we need to start working on these things. We need to, especially in Africa, we need to work on some of these things so much. There's so much envy and jealousy. and so, I mean, people are just some way. May God help us. But once we have become Christians, we have the nature of Christ. And so we need to grow over these things and overcome them. Amen. We need to grow over these things and celebrate. If someone is loved, let's celebrate one another. Praise God. When his brothers saw that their father had loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Let's go on, please. Joseph had a dream. He too. And when he told it to his brothers, well, you are going to tell them, they, they, they already don't like you. They hated him all the more. Now, listen. If somebody does not like you, if somebody does not like you, if somebody does not like you, no matter what you do, you are just adding to the hatred. Even if you call the person dear, D-E-A-R, the person will hear it, D-E-E-R. 
You say deer, you mean deer. He hears it, deer, animal. So they didn't like him. They were offended just because their father loved him more. And so even when he shared their dream, his dream with them, they hated him the more. The more anything he, he did was not. So sometimes you just have to quit pleasing somebody who doesn't like you. No, no, no. It won't, it won't get anywhere. If the person doesn't like you, it won't get anywhere. You will try your best. Sometimes you just, you see, we are all saying, hmm, hmm. Now, we are saying, hmm, because you are thinking you are the victim. Right? So, hmm, it's true. Because you have now positioned yourself as a victim. Now, you are saying, the one who is saying, hmm, somebody too is saying, hmm, with you in mind. Somebody too is saying, hmm, with you in mind. And the person is the victim. Is that not so? So, hmm, you have remembered something somebody did, which you think you are the victim. But somebody is also saying, hmm, and thinking he or she is the victim, and you are the one causing it. May God help us. I said, may God help us. Now, another thing happened. So, I'll just give a few examples. I'll soon go to the New Testament, and then we can land. Now, Saul and David. So, we have the army commander of the of Israel, Saul. He has the whole army of Israel at his command. He is the king. You know, you are the king, you are the army commander, that should be enough for you. You are you're okay. In fact, your family line is not even a family that has kingship in the blood. The tribe of Benjamin was not prophesied as a tribe that is going to raise kings. So you are even fortunate, Saul, to become the king. You should even thank God that you are the king because kings are supposed to come from Judah, not from Benjamin. So it's even a privilege that you are the king, number one. Then two, you are the army commander of the whole army of Israel. That should be enough for you. Now, he doesn't think it is enough. First Samuel chapter 18. You were standing there for 40 days when uh, Goliath came and taunted the people of Israel. I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man, let him fight. You were standing there, you didn't do anything. Then this small boy came. Eh. This small boy came. And when he came, he did wonders. He killed Goliath. And then, what happened? The women started singing. Eh. Saul has killed his thousands. And David has killed his ten thousands. I when he heard it you know evil spirits can enter you from what you hear when he heard it <laughs> once he dropped here <laughs> he said eh, eh, oh fine i know what to do you small boy when did you come to the scene we have been in the system all this while the women they have not been singing for me me, nah, that other woman who is inside, I like her. I've been saying, ah, she's not agreeing. And you, small thing you came to do. Now all the women like you. I'm the king. I will show you where power lies. So Saul, listen. Somebody who is supposed to be focusing on ruling the nation of Israel and leading the nation of Israel shifted his focus. Chasing one boy. Chased him and chased him and chased him. Hey! How we can, we can waste resources when we are offended? How we can waste energy when we are offended? You know, there are people when they are offended, you, you can, when you go to their Facebook status, you know it. I check people's statuses and you know this person is offended. This person is not happy. This, and th there's a lot of immaturity with, and you go to Facebook, all the posts are posts that are trying to, you know, uh, communicate something you want to say but you can't say it and you are hoping that the person you, are, you want to tell the thing will read it is that not so? so when you post it then you go and check whether he has read it or she has read it okay she hasn't read it then you are just waiting so you, see, you want to tell him something but you don't know how to say it so you post now a lady broke up with a guy now the lady wanted to insult the guy eh. But she didn't know how to go about it. So she just go to a status and then write. And write. 
Some people think they are better than you, but you are far better than them. One, one slide. The next slide. If somebody says he wants to go, let him go. Next slide. You are offended, though. You are offended, but you see, you are posting it there, and then 10 minutes, you go and check whether he has read it. Okay. If he has read this one, let me add another one. Then you type another one. You add it. Some people can be so offended that they can go to Facebook and unfriend you on Facebook. That is childish. Meanwhile, the person will not even see that you have unfriended. Uh, I'm not your friend again. Facebook, you are not my friend. You are not my friend. So, Saul is offended and all his energies are into chasing David. Chasing David. So let's read that. Fair, fair some more, please. 18. Yeah, and David had finished talking with Saul. Jonathan became one in spirit with David. No, let's go to verse 6. Okay, okay, maybe let's start from verse 1. I want to show you something. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan, so this is Jonathan, um, uh, Saul's son. Now, Jonathan was the next in line for kingship. So if Saul was going to be worried about anybody taking over, it should, uh, um, it should have been Jonathan rather, not Saul. Because Jonathan was the one next. At least Saul, you are a king. You have enjoyed the throne a little. So Jonathan, but Jonathan, the one who was supposed to be worried, he was not worried. He rather knew that David is better than me. Let him, let him take over. And he loved him as himself. Let's go on, please. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. Let's go. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it. Can you imagine if you are the next in line for kingship and then somebody surfaces on the scene and appears to be better than you? Look at the attitude of Jonathan. He says that, I think you are better than me. Let's make a covenant. We'll be friends. I know you are the one who's going to take over. That is the right spirit. That's the right spirit. Amen. Verse 5. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. Let's go. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel. To, so you see, until the women were singing, Saul liked David and he gave him a high rank. King Saul gave um, the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. Let's go. And they danced and they sang. Saul has slain his thousands and David is then tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought. But me, with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? Evil spirits have started. So you see, when he started thinking about this, so there's a, there's a kind of thinking, once you entertain it, eh, demons will start dancing around your head. <laughs> they, once you start, they will start dancing around your head. Just waiting for you to accept it. Then they will settle. Let's go on, please. From that time on, Saul kept a close eye, not on Israel, but on David. You have been given a whole nation to take care of. Now you are following David. Let's go on. The next day, how many days? The next day, what happened? An evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. Now somebody will say, does God have evil spirits? I will explain this another time. See, in the Old Testament, everything that happened was from God. Under the Old Covenant. Everything, everything good or bad is from God. And so they attributed everything, whether good or bad, to God. So that is one understanding you need to get. So anything, once it comes, it's mysterious, it is from God. That was the understanding. So he was prophesying in his house while David was playing the law, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand. Let's go. And he held it, saying to himself, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. He wanted to kill him. Because you see, 
when he entertained that thought, evil spirit started dancing around his head. Once he accepted it, an evil spirit came and possessed him. There are many people who have been influenced by demons because of the way they are thinking. The envy, the jealousy, and the hatred, they are an official invitation to demons to attend your wedding ceremony. Amen. You are inviting them because of that hatred. Now, let me go to the, because of time, let me go to the New Testament and then handle a few things. No, 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 let me, let me talk about one more. Absalom, Amnon, and Tamar. Second Samuel chapter 13. Now, what is happening is that Absalom had a, a sister called Tamar and Absalom had, had a half-brother called Amnon. Now, Tamar was so beautiful, so the half-brother of Absalom, Amnon, decided, um, had a feeling for her, sexual feeling for her, and he didn't know how to go about it. So his friend, Jonadab, advised him that just pretend as if you are ill, let invite her in to serve you, and then you can sleep with her. So he went on with that action and then slept with his own half-sister. So Amnon slept with Tamar. When he did that, Absalom, the real brother of Tamar, heard it. Now let's look at first, second Samuel chapter 13, verse 20. When people get offended, eh? let's go on. Second Samuel 13, 20. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has that Ammon, your brother, been with you? Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. Because in those days, if you are not a virgin, marriage will be difficult for you. Because those days, if you are going to get married, you have to be a virgin. When you, you marry and you enter the room, and you, you go and do the thing for the first time, you have to come and prove that you have been a virgin. Otherwise, they will stone you. So once uh, Amnon raped her, he had destroyed her chances of getting married. So she became a desolate woman. It was a serious thing. Let's go on. When King David heard all this, he was furious. So Absalom has said it. The thing has entered him. But he said, relax. Now he is starting to think about what to do. Verse 22. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon. Sometimes when people communicate their offense to you, it's better. Somebody will not say anything. Eh? They're quiet people. They don't say anything. Quiet. The day, <laughs> the day it will gather. Either good, neither said a word to Ammon, either good or bad. He hated Amnon because he had disgraced his sister. Okay. 23. Two years later, how many years? Where was it? It was there. So you can keep, just like you can keep something in the fridge. For years, you can keep an offense for two years, refrigerated, intact. You just need to take it out and microwave it. Then it's alive. So two years later, when Absalom's sheep shearers were at Baal Hezo, so he's organizing a party. Now, after two years, he said, okay, now, when I take any action, eh, Amnon will not suspect that I want to do something. You know, sometimes when somebody offends you, and the next day you want to do something, the person thinks like, mm, it's because of what you did yesterday. So you allow time to elapse so that the person will forget about it and then you hit hard. So he never said anything. He invited Amnon to the event. Verse 26. 26. Then Absalom said, if not, he's telling David, let my brother Amnon come with us. The king asked him, why should he go with you? Let's go on, please. But Absalom urged him, so he sent with him Amnon and the rest of the king's sons. Let's go. Absalom ordered his men. Listen. Listen. When Amnon is in high spirits from drinking wine, and I say to you, strike Amnon down, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Haven't I given you this order? Be strong and brave. <laughs> when people are offended, it's a terrible thing. Now, let me just do one New Testament um, one New Testament thing, something that we can relate with. 
John the Baptist, Luke chapter 7, 18 to 23. John the Baptist, the firebrand preacher. Can we go, please, because of the time, can we be quick? John 7, John, uh, Luke 7, 18 to 23. Luke 7, 18 to 23. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them. So, John the Baptist is in prison. He's been in prison for about two years. He's the one who baptized Jesus. He's the one who introduced Jesus. It means he was the producer of Jesus. Jesus' first album, John the Baptist is the one who produced it. He baptized him and then it's like, I'm the one who gave you the, I introduced you to the world. Now I'm in prison. At least, come and visit me some more. Jesus, come and see how I'm doing. Whether where I'm sleeping is good or not, just come and visit me. Jesus, I'm the one who baptized you. Jesus never stepped there. He never went there. Pastor never visited the member. So the member is offended. He sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? Now listen, he is the one who introduced Jesus, baptized him, and when he baptized him, a dove came, and the Spirit of God came upon him as a dove, and a voice came down from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Is that not so? So he knew that Jesus was the son of God. But offense can cloud revelation. Offense. It can make a revelation you have even received from God change. You will not even believe it again. Like you are going to marry. Oh God, God, give me the right person. Oh God, I want the right person. Oh God, oh God. Then you pray faster than that. Then you felt like, oh, this is the right person. Now you are married. Now the way that person is behaving, you know, it's like you didn't pray well. Every this person is behaving. Hey, after praying, oh, maybe you even saw visions. But the way the person is behaving, it's like, ah, is it witchcraft or it is something? What? Do you, oh, he's a wizard. This kind of. Now, you will forget all the revelation you had. You think like, ah, I didn't pray well. So, are you the one that when the men came to Jesus, let's go on, please. They said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? Look at Jesus' response. At that, that very time, Jesus cured. So, when they asked him that question, he said, hold on. Then Sunday, I'll give you an answer. Hey, all the lepers, come. Be healed, be healed. Cripples, be healed. They were waiting for an answer. And he was doing this. At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were, who were blind. Let's go. So, he replied the messengers. So, after he did these things, he said, now you have seen it yourself. Whether I am the one or I'm not the one. So go and tell John. Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Next verse. Blessed is anyone who does not... I want New King James for this. Let's all read it. New King James. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So even, there are people who are even, they have issues with God. God has offended them. They are offended at God. Ah, God. My mother was sick in the hospital. We prayed, ah, prayed. We went for all night, we prayed. We did direction, we poured anointing on you, we did this, we did this. You took my mother away. I remember I was speaking to someone who had lost a loved one. I said, just let's 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 pray. God will come for us. Oh. Then somebody who was with me said, Oh, maybe God needs him in heaven more than that thing. When somebody dies, don't tell anybody. <laughs> the guy said, So God, with all the angels he has in heaven, and all the other human beings who have died and they are there. I only have one person with me. So God is so wicked that he has come to take that person away to add to all the plenty people around him. Had it not enough for him, I said, ah, Ayeka. <laughs> so people can be offended because of this. And so John in prison was offended and he was killed. Now, no time to talk about the other ones. Now, let me land by saying that you will definitely be offended by somebody. Somebody will say something you didn't like. Somebody will. But you see, number one, one of the things you need to do is that train yourself not to allow things 
to offend you. Even if they offend you, not to offend you for a long time. Listen, we all get hurt. Is that right? If some, something cuts you, you can get hurt. Any wound, if you get hurt, and the wound is still a wound for one year, don't go and stand and say something. As for me, when I get hurt, my wound, it can keep two years. No. It's an abnormality. You need to see a medical doctor. It's the same way if you are emotionally hurt, and for one year, two years, the pain is still there, you are still hurt. There's a deficiency in your system. It might be a diabetic sore. You know, when somebody has diabetes, the sore never, I mean, you can treat it and treat it. So it is an issue with your system. You will need, you need attention. So if you are hurt, something that happened three years ago, you are so hurt, so hurt that when you remember the thing today, you are as hurt as that day. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. There is a disorder. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. So we need to develop ourselves. And you know, certain temperaments, there are certain temperaments that get hurt more than others, right? And Akumia will teach us that one later. My friends, the melancholics, they are nice people. Let's see all the melancholics here. Okay. Ooh. They are nice people. Very, very nice people. Yeah. If the tea is hot, say, why is it too hot? Why is it too cold? Why is it? If you, if you are not careful, you pick up a lot of things. You, you let a lot of things worry you. And the way to know that you are not really offended is your response towards the person or the action. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are alive. We are alive, right? I was going to give my last example, but I won't give it because we are alive. Uh, let, me, let me give is is. Um, no, he will not be comfortable. I was going to give you an example. He will not be comfortable. When you're a pastor, as a pastor, definitely I know I've offended some people here. Is that not so? Say, say, let's see. Definitely. Maybe you said something somebody didn't like, or you didn't say it. Somebody's offended. That's right. And you too, you offend me. Me too, I'm offended by some of the things. But I thank God that. Hey, Hey, uh, oh, you throw it away and continue. Throw it away and continue. Otherwise, if you're going to do that, eh, there are some people, if you're a leader, you will never let them do opening prayer. You never let them lead anything because it's full of, you are worried about so many things. Like today, we have Bible studies. You have met the Bible study leaders. You have told them, we have Bible studies. Come, let's take Bible studies seriously. We have Bible studies. The Bible study leaders are not around. If you are not careful, you will say, all oh, those who didn't come, don't lead again. Mm, because some things are worrying. But you know, sometimes you just need to let things go and overlook many things and, this, and, re, and, and resolve that you are, going to re, you are going to settle some of these things. Now, I don't have time. Maybe another Sunday, I'll treat the how to handle it proper. So, I would end here. But let's look at all these things. Are you hurt? Is there anybody who is hurt here? Nobody will say Yes. Somebody has hurt you bad. That is why. Eh, hurt you bad. That is why you need to be careful. When you are treading on certain things, just be careful. As I, one of the things I've settled is that human beings can offend you. So when I'm dealing with people, eh, I don't trust 100%. It's like media team. Please, media team, get to suffer. By six, let's do setup. We are going to do live. It's an area program. Oh, we'll get there, we'll get there. I don't believe. Until I'm there and I see that thing set up, I don't believe because anything can happen. So you see, when you condition yourself that human beings have their own feelings and so they can emit negative or they can emit negative energies. You see, you are prepared. You are prepared for it. You are worried, you are offended, but within a short time, you have gathered yourself up. You are going. You have gathered yourself up. Yeah. Otherwise, you meditate, you get heart problems. You start getting mental problems. You are walking around and you are talking. You are talk Can you imagine she said this to me? Can you imagine he said, look at him. Look at him. I mean, look at him. Look at his legs. Look at him. Can you talk to me like that? Don't you mean your legs they don't qualify? Look at my legs. My legs are better than your own. Then a lot of things start coming to your mind. <laughs> even the school I attended, you didn't even attend some. Look at him. He didn't even attend anywhere. And look, what, what is he doing? 
Uh, you, can't, you can't teach me. You, many things will start coming to your mind. But we are expected to walk in love. Amen. And not harbor offenses. Then lastly, listen. If somebody comes to apologize to you, the person has done well. But mostly, they won't come and apologize. Sometimes, some of the people you are even offended at, they don't even know they have offended you. They don't even know. You are the one who is worried and thinking about it. And they won't come and apologize. There are some people too who have a higher marginal propensity to sustain offenses. What I'm saying is that there are some people, they can be at loggerheads with thousand people and enjoy. They are just enjoying the fact that I don't talk to you. I don't talk to you. <laughs> I'm champion. And they will never take any steps to reconcile. You are the one who has, they won't take any steps. There are people like that. They have an appetite for contention. They have a strong, they can, I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you. You go away, go away. One person is sustaining 10 conflicts at the same time. May God help us. Let's bow down our heads, please. When we let go and we forgive, the Bible says that as long as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. As long as it depends on you. As long as it depends on you. Jesus said that if you have an issue with a brother, go to him and talk to him. If he doesn't understand, take two more people and go and talk about it. If he doesn't understand, inform the church. If he still does not agree, consider the person as an unbeliever. Telling you that there are people who no matter what you do, they are just hard. But if you're a Christian, that should not be your story. Are you offended? You were sick, nobody came to visit you. Thank God you didn't die, you are alive. Thank God for that one. If you had died, you will not be here worrying about somebody coming not to visit, not coming to visit you. Thank God. Let that be enough. So, you are a king. Let that be enough for you. Don't be worried about many things. Are you offended? Because you applied for a scholarship. It was not given to you. I said the church should help me in my business. They didn't help me. So the elder or the dickness in charge, when you see her coming, you see a human body, but the head looks like something else. You are worried. You are offended. Your leader has said something. In marriage, your husband has said something, has done something, I won't forgive. No, 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 I'm not letting go. You are disturbing your own self. You have set yourself up on the way to mental health issues. You are going to have BP issues. The Holy Spirit can help us. He can take that pain away. He can take that wound away. That wound that has been bleeding for three years, five years. One wound bleeding for five years. There is a disorder. It's not normal. God created us that. Once you get hurt, the passage of time should cause healing. It should cause healing. I want us to pray that, oh, Spirit of God, help us. Heal our hearts from hurts from offenses, from bitterness. For some people, you are so bitter, you are just waiting like Absalom. You are just waiting for a time to strike and repay the person. No. No. You are a child of God. Jesus was beaten and crucified. While on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We hold a lot of things. For some of us, your heart is a prison. You have arrested many people in your heart. They are all in prison in your heart. All in your heart. 20 people have been arrested and put in chains in your heart. I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I didn't this one. Meanwhile, the person is walking about freely, eating and drinking. And we are killing ourselves. I want us to pray that the Spirit of God will move mightily upon us and he will touch us and he will cause us to let go 
to let go. Sometimes people are oppressed by demons in dreams and in real life because they are holding on to an offense like Saul. So demons are having a way to oppress you and worry you. So you're having hallucinations. You're having thoughts. You're having all kinds of things because you're entertaining a thought that invites them. I want us to free ourselves. It won't cost you anything. It will make you feel foolish. To make you feel foolish. But you are rather the wise person. You can call that person. I have forgiven you. I don't hold anything against you. No, I don't hold it against you. I don't hold it against you. So that you can freely go and move. Otherwise, it will choke the flow of the Spirit of God. Choke the flow of the Spirit of God. There are people who have grown over 50 years and you are still blaming your father for not sending you to school. You are still bitter that your parents did not do this for you, did not do that for you. No, let it go. Let's free ourselves. And let's allow God to work in our hearts. Let's allow God to work in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, work on our hearts. Brood over us. Spirit of God, brood over us. Let wounds be healed. In the name of Jesus, administer healing balm to the hearts and emotions of people. Oh, Makabahanda Baza. You will know that you have been freed. You are just free from inside. It might be a colleague worker. It might be your boss. It might be somebody else. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. Me now your love sweep this nation cause our soul Lord to arise give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real let there be love shed among us. Let there be love. Oh, our Father. Maybe you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Now, Jesus is the one who gives us the nature and the ability to live above such human tendencies. When we accept Jesus our Lord as our Lord and Savior, we are born again. We are giving birth to our flesh. We are giving a new life. And the Spirit of God indwells us. And the Bible says that hope does not disappoint. For God has poured out His Spirit into our hearts. Is there anybody here who wants to give his life to Jesus? You can lift up your hands if you want to give your life to Jesus here. Yeah? We'll pray with you. And that will begin a beautiful journey. If you have already given your life to Jesus, talk to God as we end. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. You are hurt. You are so hurt. Anytime the incident comes to mind, your BP rises. You are killing yourself. You are killing yourself. You can't sleep because you are hurt. You are losing days of sleep over something. If you want to talk about it, go talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, leave it. Let it go. And free yourself. Then, we'll be walking in the light of God. We'll be walking in the light of God. If you have any intentions to repay someone, to revenge and do something, 
no that is not the way of the master that's not the way of the master let's go that guy wasted your time he didn't marry you god will give you a better husband that lady wasted your money didn't marry you god will give you something better god will give you something better let go the spirit of god helps us in that you want to ask Edda Bedu to pray